I came across some pages in my journal that need to be its own video. I've actually torn them out of my journal because of how intense they are. Don't let me drown. Don't let me drown. About this video is me reading my suicide note. So this video is, it explains my trauma, it explains why I have PTSD, it explains some of the most vile acts another human being can do to another. This video contains talk of sexual assault, rape, general assault, being drugged, alcohol, abuse, suicide. Watch your own caution and please treat people with respect. I'm gonna go ahead and get reading. Hi, if you're reading this then I guess I finally did it. Please don't blame yourself. I made this choice. I made the decision to end my life. I have my own reasons behind this. So I'm writing this note letter so you aren't left with unanswered questions. My PTSD. I was diagnosed with PTSD after multiple sessions with a non-NHS funded consultant psychiatrist. My flashbacks have been getting worse, sometimes to a point where I can't even move. I've been left dealing with these moments because all anybody ever cares about is the diagnosis of BPD. I see the moments he stepped in front of the train, the moment his body got thrown about the train, the snaps of his bones, I see the aftermath and then everything goes black. Hearing the words, this is because of you, followed by smashes and cracks of his body. Like someone put my brain on the light comes back on and I'm somewhere I don't remember. I don't know how I got that. I'll hear a siren or alarm and the next thing I know I'm back in a cell being raped, assaulted and attacked by, by officers. There's no CCTV laying over and over in my head. There's a single moment getting punched in the face because I wasn't crying when I was beaten to the ground. Why wouldn't you cry? I was trapped in a room, locked in a bathroom, waiting for you to come back and finish what you started. Pictures that shouldn't have even existed, posted for everyone to see, like he was proud of what you did. Drugged and shoved in a car, I didn't know you or what you wanted when you when you realised the drug didn't work, you panicked. You smashed my head against the wall, knocked me unconscious, left me half dressed in the middle of a street, drunk, high and everything went black. We met a second time, the night after, I took the drugs out of your pocket, I used it all and waited for death. You shoved me against the wall and smashed a glass bottle off my head. Punched me into the men's bathroom and I became your ragdoll. But it's just my BPD, right? I can't stand the sight of myself. I can't eat. I can't drink. All these things are around my head. The memories, the experiences, they win. Nobody has ever listened, so hopefully they will now. I'm depressed. I have anxiety. I'm traumatized. Some days are good, most days are bad. There's more to me than just BPD. That label has ruined me. It's killed me. And there's nothing left for me. What you have to realise is this is... It took a lot to read that. And it took a lot when I found it to read. It's so why I didn't read it out initially. When I filmed the video earlier, I was like, I can't read that. And I've read it all now. Um, I'm so... <laughs> unhappy right now. Because... All everyone focuses on is the BPD, and BPD really isn't my main issue. My issue is having the episodes of dissociation where I've had a flashback, I dissociate, and I end up like 10 miles from where I live, and I don't know how I got there. The truth is, my life is very out of control, and I am the way I am as a consequence of the experiences I've had. I didn't just wake up one day and decide, oh, I want to be traumatized today. I didn't wake up one day wanting to go and do drugs. I didn't wake up one day wanting to get thrown in a police cell and raped. I didn't want any of that. I didn't want to watch someone who I loved, someone who I cared about, kill themselves. I didn't want any of this. And I'm so sick of people saying, oh, well, she's making it up. She's obviously lying. You don't. I keep my past and some of the darkest things that I've been through very private and nowhere near a camera. You guys see 10 minutes, if that, out of a day. You don't know the full story, and you never will. Some things I'm not ready to talk about. There's a whole page of this note that I didn't read out, and that is because of my, I want, because of my own protection. I, I, if I read it, I know I will end, I will end up making an attempt. People don't realize the seriousness of my past. People don't realize how intense things are. People think that they can say and do whatever they want and it have no effect. When people say, oh, when people try and trigger you, intentionally, unintentionally, my body constitutes 
my trauma, you know, my trauma is very valid. It's real. It happened. My past is full of trauma. Some traumas I will never talk about. Some, my friends know some of my life that I've never put online. There are some people in this world that I actually do trust. My trust in people has got worse over time because I've had more and more thrown in my face. So yeah, I'm secretive. Yes, I hide half my life from you. There are reasons behind that. I don't even know how to end this video. I really don't. All I want to do is cry. <laughs>